This video will look at compression. Now, compression software, which we looked at in the utilities uh, video, reduces the size of files. Um, and there's various reasons why you might want a file to be uh, reduced in size. Uh, it might take less storage space on the system, might download faster, improving online experiences, or it might allow things to stream faster, for example, video and audio files. And there are two ways in which compression software might reduce the size of a file. That's lossy compression, and that's where unrequired data is removed from a file uh, permanently. And MP3s are an example of that, where sound quality um, may, may reduce, but not to a point where it's noticeable by the listener, by reducing certain frequencies of sound that we don't really notice. And lossless compression. And this is where data is only temporarily removed from the file, but then it's added back to the file when the file is, is to be used again, it's, it's rebuilt. And zip files are an example of that. So with lossy compression, as it's already stated, this is when require, unrequired data is removed permanently from the file. So with MP3, certain frequencies are not noticeable um, to uh, human beings. It might be certain sounds that we can't really hear. So the, the data of those frequencies can be completely removed from the file, reducing the size of the file, but not reducing the quality, not noticeably anyway. When you're chatting online or via um, your mobile, then lossy compression is used so that only a small amount of bandwidth is used. So the sound quality reduces, but it doesn't really affect the ability to understand the other person. So when you speak on the phone, you know, it might not sound like uh, you're necessarily in the room with them because um, the quality is not there, but you can still understand them. It does the job and reduces the amount of bandwidth used. Images are often compressed using lossy compression techniques. Um, so it might be that details of images are lost, but again, not over, overly impairing the quality of the image. Um, and lossy compression is really important on websites where you want the page to load up really quickly. Um, you know, if you've got huge files or files which are, um, are quite large in, in size, um, then that's gonna take longer to load up on the screen and give uh, website users um, not the best experience. So lossy compression results in a smaller file compared to the lossless compression method. So it's much, much smaller when you're removing data permanently. Now lossless compression, although removes data temporarily, will later recreate the file exactly as it was. And this type of compression looks at sequence of data stored within the file. It constructs an algorithm that can later reconstruct the file by reproducing the same sequence of data. So this type of compression doesn't remove as much data as lossy compression, but does allow the file to uh, reduce in terms of its size and still retain the original data, which can then be, as I said, recreated, rebuilt later on. Now, how can this be done? Let's have a look at some examples of lossless compression. Now, the first one we'll look at is run length encoding. So this is a simple form of lossless compression um, and it demonstrates how uh, lossless compression methods seek to find patterns and sequences of data that can then be reconstructed at a later date. So if you look at the following image, a very terrible um, one bit image, this is the data that's behind it. Now what you might notice that on the second row, you've got five um, zeros, so each pixel is, is a, a bit, um, and we've got five bits for that second row of data. Now run length encoding would look at the pattern, the fact that there are five white pixels in a row, and so would store the data whilst the file's compressed as five times W basically. So it would be 101, which is the number five, and then a zero to represent the color. And that uses one fewer bits. 1010, 5Ws, is one fewer bits than having five bits each representing the white of the pixel. And that's the principle of run length encoding. And as images increase in size, generally the patterns of similar shades increase in length, and so the data required to store the pattern gets much smaller in relation to the original file's data. So another example of lossless compression is dictionary coding. 
and here we look to replace the file's data with a reference to what the data is. So imagine a dictionary which contains all the words of the English language and imagine this dictionary was contained in a table with every word having a unique index location. So the word computer might be located at index 24. The, word, the letter I might be represent, um, located at dictionary index 54. Love might be at location 85 and science at 99. And each of those indexes have got a binary number to represent those values. So if you consider the following string, which is 23 bytes in size, because each character has it, you know, it's represented by a byte. I love computer science. With dictionary coding, these words could be replaced with their reference, their index location in the dictionary. So the data would be stored whilst it's being compressed as, well, we've got here 11000 which is the number 24 for computer. Then we've got six bits for the letter I. We've got uh, seven bits for the word love and seven bits there for the word science, which is 25 bits in total. So just by having those index locations as the reference to those words, we're actually compressing the file down um, from 23 bytes down to 20 feet, uh, 25 bits, which is far smaller. Um, and yes, the dictionary would have to accompany the compressed file, but for large files, the size of the dictionary doesn't have a massive impact on the size of the compressed file.